Hello, people of YouTube. Hello, Silver Stackers. Hello, Coin Roll Hunters. Welcome to my little corner of the internet. This is Michael from Pennyhaven, and first off, if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button, then give it a like, then come back over here and hit that bell icon so you know when my new videos come out. Oh, also, hit that join button that you see just down below here. If you hit that button, it'll tell you all the benefits of channel membership. And I'll tell you a little secret. There are a few benefits that aren't even listed. So, you can know what you can get if you decide to join up on the Penny Haven channel. Ask some of my current members. They'll let you know. It's a good time. Anyhow, what I want to talk about today is the history of the image of the fasces. I always pronounced it fasces, but I found out recently that I was incorrect in doing so. So you might hear me flop back and forth. I will do my best to keep it consistent. Coin lovers, like you and I, will be most familiar with this image from the reverse of the Mercury Dime, or the Winged Liberty Head Dime, designed by Adolf Weinmann. I did an entire video on this design because it is my favorite dime design. I'll put a link to that video right up there. Check it out if you have not yet. I recently learned a lot more about this symbol, so I wanted to share that information with you. And I just want to say hi to anyone who's come over from the Saturday Night Coin Show. I teased this topic last Saturday, so hopefully a good number of you have come over from there to check this out. All right. Oh, here's my Mercury Dime book. It's getting pretty close. I'm missing the key dates, of course, still, but only two on that page. And only one on this last page, and that's because this Whitman bookshelf uh, style book has a spot for the for a, an error for a 1942 over 1941. So that's just kind of setting me up to lose there. I could have that whole last page filled. Anyhow, we're here to talk about the fasces. I've written a script uh, from all the stuff that I learned about it recently, so I'm just going to voice over that while showing you images of what I'm talking about. So let's get to it. In ancient times, fasces were a Roman symbol of power and authority, though it may date further back to the Etruscans. It is comprised of a bundle of wooden rods and an axe bound together by leather strap. Fasces represented that a man held imperium, or executive authority. The fasces he carried symbolized the power in two ways. The rods suggest punishment by beating, the axe suggests beheading. At times, the axe head would be removed when the symbol was carried through the streets of Rome to downplay the implication of aggression and corporal punishment. But the fasces represent not only strength and authority, but also unity. The U.S. has used the symbol with this meaning in mind in a number of places. Most relevant to this channel would be the reverse of the Winged Liberty or Mercury Dime. But the fasces is also featured prominently in many places around the seat of U.S. power. Washington, D.C. While a single birch rod can easily be broken over the knee, put a dozen or more together and secure them with a leather strap, and you find it far more difficult to break. This makes the fasces the perfect symbol to feature in the Lincoln Memorial, an image that evokes strength through unity. At the Lincoln Memorial, you'll see your first set of fasces at the base of the main stairs. This one features the axe head, with an eagle perched upon it. In another blending of history and our relatively new nation, Thirteen rods make up this fasces, symbolizing the original thirteen states. Once you enter the memorial, the many depictions of the fasces do not include the axe head. You can find them in murals, flanking the inscription of Lincoln's inaugural address, and most prominently, under the hands of the great man himself. The fasces is not limited to the Lincoln Memorial. Far from it. They can be found on many, many structures erupted during the 1930s, including the Supreme Court, Department of Justice, and the two bronze fasces that flank the United States flag behind the Speaker in the House of Representatives. Unfortunately, when Benito Mussolini came to power in 1922, he chose the fasces, quote, as the emblem of ancient Rome and the new Italy regenerated by the fascisti, end quote. Mussolini invaded Ethiopia in 1935. On November 1, 1936, Italy joined up with Nazi Germany to form the Axis powers. 
they officially entered World War II on June 10, 1940, once the defeat of France seemed a foregone conclusion. With the fasces being the symbol of fascist Italy, its use in new construction and decoration of the U.S. fell off sharply. The new design for the Roosevelt dime featured a torch flanked by olive and oak branches in place of the fasces. So, this is my brief overview of the history and meaning behind the fasces. Thank you. Okay, so that's that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. I did not realize how prominently this image was depicted in Washington, D.C. I've been all over Washington, D.C. It's been quite a long time since I've been there, but I was not aware of this symbol or its meaning at that time. Next time I go, I cannot wait to keep my eye out for it. All right, time to get on out of here. Thank you to my channel members. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. This is Michael from Pennyhaven. Happy hunting.